So folks, taking the i5-13600KF out of the uh, Gigabyte Gaming X motherboard, it's a B660. Bought one of these thermal right things. Didn't seem to do a whole lot for that CPU. Um, eventually I'm going to use that on the i7, but what we're going to do with the i5-13600KF is put it in this ASUS Prime Z690P motherboard. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi one, I believe it's DDR4, if I remember correctly. So, I'm going to pop this open. And I would replace that uh, bracket, but I think we're going to... I think we're going to um, use it with the i7-13700K. Maybe it'll make a difference there, as it really hadn't done squat for this. Um, and if it did... Maybe it was one, one or two degrees. Nothing noticeable, right? All right, so you saw I had the cover on. Um, personally, in my opinion, you can take the cover off now or, you know, do this deal. Let it pop off. Hopefully it'll pop off. Um, wow, this one's not popping. So manually pull down here. And if you're buying it new, it'll pop off. Um... So before I drop this down, you want to make sure your CPU seated good. And let's uh, let's try and get as close in here as we can. So the green board part of the CPU should be flush with this outer uh, portion of the, the socket, right? And this is in there pretty good. So we'll drop this down. Now... Um, one comment while I'm doing this, it is getting closer to winter time. Um, concerns of static electricity, you know, potentially is this the best thing to be, you know, working on a countertop like this? Um, probably not, but this is, uh, this is the setup we got today. CPU's in there, okay? You can see on there, potentially i5-13600KF. And in case you're curious, that's your bracket looks like after you take it off. Um, it holds the CPU in. That's what that looks like. All right. Put this back in the box. Keep it safe. So what I want to do in this video, folks, um, this motherboard BIOS has not been updated in a while. It was updated before 13th Gen came out. Way before, actually. So... This should be an example of what will happen if I install a 13th gen into an LGA 1200 motherboard, specifically the 12th gen motherboards. Um, if I install it in there without a BIOS update, what's going to happen? So rather than uh, me grabbing one of my big old hunker CPU coolers, we're going to use the one that came with the i9-12900. Uh, TDP is really not rated for the CPU, but since we're not going to overclock it, uh, we should be just fine. Now I was just noticing, folks, this, this motherboard, um, oddly enough, would appear to have been... appears to have extra sets of holes on it. Um, I thought I bought this brand new, but whoever owned this before me, it would appear has this set up so you can use LGA 1200 CPU coolers. And I'm just finally realizing this. Oh my God. I So I had thought about I had personally thought about um, doing that, you know, drilling the holes out, but uh, I don't have a uh, bench drill or whatever. We've got, you know, the regular old cordless drill. So bench drill will ensure, you know, you do a better job, right? All right, so we're going to put some uh, thermal paste on here. We're using the thermal right stuff. This is, you know... Really just uh, just enough to get this thing booted up. All right, now 
CPU cooler. This does have ARGB on it. This is, uh, in case you guys haven't seen it, this is probably the coolest Intel stock fan that there is. And to get it, you have to buy an i9 um, 12900. Now, who knows? Maybe there'll be a i9-1300. So I'm just going to go around here and screw these in. Hopefully they're going in. Um, you know, normally I, I do this one and go diagonal to it, but it doesn't look like that one's lining up, folks. So sometimes you have too much flexibility with the design of these things. So we've got We've got one screw in, and none of the other ones are lined up. So you know why you, you want to put the tape on the back of these? is so that <laughs> the backing plate actually stays where it needs to with the threaded posts coming up through the holes in the motherboard. All right, so I'll spare you guys from watching me tighten this up. All right, folks, so we have all of these in nice and tight. Hook up our, uh, we're not gonna hook up the R ARGB, just the CPU cooler, which is this four pin right here. All right. So amazingly, after spinning this thing around like I'm doing, it's still going to work. We need some RAM. That uh, is compatible. And, you know, to just get this thing fired up, one stick of RAM in this location here. No drive. This is all we want, folks, to start. Yeah, I really do have this thing sitting on a stool. 24-pin um, power connector. Essential. This thing. Of course, I do have the power supply off, by the way, um, and preferably it'd be plugged, unplugged from the wall. That's there. Now, this is a CPU that will require a, a graphics card. Uh, one set of 1x8s. The power supply does have the ability to power up the uh, second 1x4. So I'm just going to put any old graphics card on here. This is a Zotac GTX 1630. And one thing I did not grab, folks, plug in our mouse. I didn't grab a um, power switch. Now, I don't need it for this example because we're just going in the BIOS, but uh, we don't have the uh, my cable. Sorry, we don't need our antenna on the Wi-Fi to work for this. And it one of these is Wi-Fi or HDMI. Okay, so we have HDMI hooked up. We got our USB. I don't know why I plugged in Ethernet. We don't need that. So we've got everything, folks, except the power switch. All right, so um, power switch goes over here. Flip this on. We have power there. Let's see if this thing I left this running, but this is what you're gonna 
get if you do not have a BIOS update. So 13th gen in here, graphics card, minimal connections. Um, so we need to pull this out, do a BIOS update. Or if you have one of those little buttons for a BIOS update, um, you can do it without having the CPU and the graphics card and all that stuff installed. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.